Welcome to Series 12, everyone. We hope you all enjoyed your holidays and are as excited as we are to jump into another exciting year. To start the new year off right, we are finally getting to Ryan's favorite game. He's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's been wanting to cover Heroes Unlimited since the beginning, and it is very exciting for him to finally share it with you. <laughs> Uh, and now we are on equal garbage footing. That's the best footing to be on, honestly. Absolutely. <laughs> as long as you're on top of the garbage and not in it. Uh-huh. Well, just a reminder to everyone uh, and my co-host over there, Amelia, um, I'm going to be at the Midwinter Gaming Convention in Milwaukee, Wisconsin next week. No, this week. Next week. This weekend. Nope. This if you're weekend. listening to this weekend. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. This weekend. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> this I weekend. Thinking, I was thinking like when this comes out, like versus today. Okay, yes. Monday. Got it. Good. Great. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I know uh, what day it is. <laughs> all right. Um, I don't even know where I was. It's okay, just start okay. over. Um, and another reminder, I will be at the Midwinter Gaming Convention in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on January twelfth. Uh, that is this coming Saturday, if you're listening to this, the week of we, the week that we released this episode. And I've got a couple planned playtests of Chimera. Um, if you're able to make it, I still have a few spots available. Um, I believe there are two slots taken on each game. That means there's three left available for both my afternoon and my evening game. So uh, definitely check it out. In other fun New Year news, I am happy to announce the official launch of Garbage of the Five Rings. Mm. Woo! Episode zero of the show released on January 1st, and episode one will come out tomorrow, Tuesday, January 8th, 2019. Uh, you can join Jude and I as we dig into the lore of L5R, a crazy game that we love dearly and also hate so much. <laughs> Speaking of garbage games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love trash. I can't help it. I know. I'm really excited to dive into this series and, and learn about all the trash that you're talking about constantly. Yeah. I, I mean, I think maybe I'll make so much more sense to you as a person and you'll be like, oh, this explains so much. Uh-huh. I get it now. <laughs> oh, I see why you are the way you are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I understand I now why you go to monthly therapy. Yes, I accept you for who you are, Amelia. Oh, thank you, Ryan. <laughs> and speaking of accepting people for who they are, we have another review. From someone who accepts us as we are? I, I believe so. We'll find out when I read it. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Matthew CCNA from Canada. It's titled, A Wonderful and Insightful Look at Character Creation. I just finished binge listening to their back catalog. Their focus on character creation creates an interesting entry point into the systems and worlds of every RPG they look at. Their audio quality is excellent, the hosts are delightful, and have excellent on-air chemistry. Thank you so much, Matthew. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, it's so nice. I feel like we get that comment every so often that you and I work well together. And we do I work mean, well together. Oh, for sure, I agree. I just think it's funny that we like didn't know each other really before we started this. That we were just like It's true. We we do have a nice dichotomy. But we're two folks from Wisconsin. So. It's true. It's true. And you <laughs> you know, we went to school at the same place. So That's true. Yeah. Aw. Aw. Not at the same time though. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Well, with all of that out of the way, please uh, attempt, maybe, to enjoy Heroes Unlimited. Oh, there's plenty to enjoy. <laughs> you can enjoy, enjoy my <laughs> exasperation. You can enjoy me not enjoying it. <laughs> oh, there's plenty of that too, yes. <laughs>
Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using Ryan's favorite system. <laughs> I'm one of your hosts, Amelia, and this episode, my co-host Ryan and I welcome Jeff and John from the System Mastery Podcast. We're here to discuss character creation for Heroes Unlimited, a superhero role-playing game system by Palladium Books. Yeah, welcome to Character Creation Cast, both of you. Uh, we're really excited you could join us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, we're super happy to be here. Awesome. Let's start by introducing you both for our audience. Jeff, could you go ahead and tell us a bit more about yourself and any projects you are currently involved in? Um, well, let's see. My name's Jeff. I am the one of the hosts of the System Mastery, Expounded Universe, and Movie Mastery podcasts, along with any number of bonus content that we do, uh, any amount of it, rather. We are mostly podcast hosts. I'm not really involved in anything at the moment uh, in terms of developing a book or something like that. Although, one book that we submitted in, uh, stuff to, a story to, is in development. The uh, Flying Circus RPG, written by our friend Erica Chapel, which oh, should be yeah. coming out any day now, uh, actually has a whole section in it, or a whole secondary book that is a joke content left over from one of our epi the episodes <laughs> on one of our shows. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the Blimp Legger setting that this is going to be incorporated into her role playing game is is oh that's amazing. Yeah, it's just a a weird joke. We we took a a question and answer session once with someone whose question was. How can I get my players to stop demanding airships in every role playing game? And <laughs> told them that they should really lean into it instead and just put airships everywhere and make a whole airship based economy. And <laughs> one thing led to another, and now it's going to be a real setting. So that's kind of fun. That's going to be coming out soon. That is awesome. Yeah. Also, I sound just like John, apparently. So uh, my apologies to all your listeners. <laughs> no problem. Uh, speaking of John, John, can you tell us a bit more about yourself and any other projects that you might be involved in? Yeah, of course. Uh, I am the main host of the System Mastery <laughs> podcast, uh, Movie Mastery and Expounded Universe. Yeah, I really should have uh, read that contract more carefully. Yeah. <laughs> Always look at the fine print. Mm -hmm. uh, and outside of that, I have done a few guest spots on some actual play podcasts right now. Uh, one of the stories in Orpheus Protocol is going on where I play a character in that. Uh, and I was a regular in Swallows of the South, which is now uh, winding up to start a new season with a new game that they're going to be using. So we are getting ready to launch that eventually. Nice. Very so cool. like maybe a little bit busy or like, do you like podcasting a, or? It, well, you know, it's uh, better than retail. So I'll <laughs> take it. It's working slope. at Radio Shack. You do one and then you there are more. Oh, yeah. We started, what, maybe six years ago now? Five, uh, a five and a half. Five. A little over five years ago now. And at this point, it's become our full-time job. Uh, and we couldn't be happier. Oh, well, I mean, I could be happier. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that was hyperbole. Be, <laughs> obviously, you could have a pizza right now. Yeah, obviously. That's true. All right. Well, with all of that out of the way, <laughs> let's go ahead and start discussing what this game is all about. What's in a game? So let's start with the setting. What is the setting for this game? Well, it's uh, basically whatever you want it to be. It's superheroes, but there's no specific, like, this is the city it takes place in, or these are the main characters in the background. Like, there's no meta plot or anything mm -hmm. like that, which is nice. Yeah, it's a world just like ours, a day just like any other day, and the year is definitely like 1989. <laughs> yeah, 89 to... to early 2000s i guess depending on the the edition of the book yeah i mean you can tell there's a little hint here and there that this book was written in the late 80s like and has stayed that way even through the revisions mm -hmm. because like they mentioned a cell a, a small computer that is handheld and you can talk to uh that would cost at least thirty thousand dollars if such a thing were even available mm -hmm. truly the realm of science fiction mm -hmm. <laughs> stretches credulity i don't know mm -hmm. yeah but effectively, it's just a modern setting um, with, you know, normal cities or rural areas as you see fit. It, it basically an alternate Earth. Does it have to be Earth? Can you play in space? Oh, absolutely. You can yeah, play in space. Oh, yeah. But they've why got, would you want to? They have rules for everything in this game. <laughs> Don't you and, worry. Uh, and, and supplement books that are about space and alternate dimensions. Well, uh -huh. You can go get the Mutants in Space book. Uh-huh. There's the, there's the Mutants uh, time-traveling one. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. transdimensional TNT. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But and there's also mutants in orbit or alien uh, aliens unlimited is pr- I think the closest thing to a direct space translation for this game. Yeah. Now there was actually a setting book called Scrapers, Scrapers. for this. Yep. Mm-hmm. Why? So the next question, <laughs> friends, money? is why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try really hard not to be too mean to this game. But Ryan, well, well, this is a bad why, game. We have to go back to Dearborn, Michigan. The year is 1985. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to the history in a little bit. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, what sort of things do we need to play this game? Oh, it's the the standard thing you'd see in a late 80s RPG. The uh, You need dice, pencils, friends, maybe a couple of pizzas, and your imagination. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems pretty standard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 3D6 for your stats. A lot of D20s. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of this. This is one of the rare games that does use D4s. Uh, yep. I have never seen tiles for a load of charts. So yeah, you need all the basics. Although this game doesn't. Although it does use ranges and so on they're so big that it doesn't really make sense to try and use this game in a miniatures format right. so you can pretty much skip maps and minis yeah it's it, theater of the mind is is the best way probably to play this or or little tiny like maps on on just a sheet of paper mm-hmm. that's how my friends and i used to play just so you have basic positioning yeah we kind of back when i played this in, in middle and high school we mostly used uh we kind of invented the fate zone system to play it mm-hmm. where we just write down a, a list of zones and, and indicate how hard it was to get from one to the other. Yeah. There, there's a lot of home rules that make this game better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sign of a yeah. great RPG. Uh huh. <laughs> how many, how many of the books do you need to play this game? One. Just, just the one. one. Mm-hmm. You don't need like a, there's not like a DM's guide or anything. It's no. just the one. Book. Well, there, there is, but you don't need it. <laughs> I've never even seen it. It's, yeah, there's a Game Master's Guide. Uh, it was released in early 2000s. Several years after the game. Yes. Okay, yes. Mm-hmm. cool. Uh, is Got it even it. for Heroes Unlimited or is it for Rifts? It's for all. Oh, okay. It, 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 yeah. I think it's technically a Rift supplement, but it's mm. applicable uh, kind of like the, uh, what is that? The conversion book. All right, um, well, then never mind. I have seen it. Yes. Okay, so then following that, what do you do in this game as a character? Well, <laughs> it sounds like whatever you want. Pretty much. I mean, depending on really heavily how you want to take it, mm-hmm. uh, you can do your standard like Justice League. We're all in mm-hmm. the same team. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can do something where uh, it's like everyone decides to be like teenagers and you're all in high school together. Mm-hmm. You can do weird things with it if you want to. And of course, part of the whole being a connect connected to the Palladium megaverse is that you can also use it to tell stories with other Palladium games. Like you can introduce a supernatural horror element if you want to throw beyond the supernatural in there. Yep. Or double down on martial arts and, and secret kicking and, and uh, spy technology. Ah, secret kicking. <laughs> <laughs> the best kind of kicking. <laughs> Uh, by ninjas and super spies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, the, with the expansion books, the it's really "quote unquote" unlimited <laughs> what you can do with the game, which is fantastic. Uh, but generally, you're you're playing as heroes when you're dealing with just the the heroes unlimited book. Yeah, yeah, and of course, a lot of them are you know darker heroes or heroes mm-hmm. that aren't super powered. You have oh, I, you know, I'm a vigilante or I'm a professional game hunter who has yeah. turned to the most dangerous game. Man, uh, super villains. Yeah, yeah, and you could play super villains in this too as well because character creation for both is the same. Yeah, although there is, of course, a villains unlimited book as well for this. <laughs> yeah, it there. had a few extra superpowers and then just a big list of NPCs. Yeah, I love that book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So what what's unique about Heroes Unlimited? Honestly, I think the one thing that's unique about Heroes Unlimited that you probably get that's sort of unique about a lot of Palladium stuff is they really kitchen sink this thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it's not enough to just go, oh, you can play as a superhero and we threw in a couple things like you can be your your batting gentlemen's or whatever. They also were like, nah, magic, psionics, gadgets, robots. Robot, yeah. You're mm-hmm. a cyborg. Yeah. You're an alien. It doesn't matter. Everything's here. There are 
there's only, there's a couple different kinds of superhero games that exist out there, and the easiest way to categorize them is there are ones that kind of try to go super freeform, like Hero System, where you know you build your own powers, mm-hmm. uh, and then there are ones that try to really kitchen sink, like John said, the uh, this one Marvel superheroes role playing, the old one from the '80s, where they're like, oh, we can just we can list every superpower, why not? That's just <laughs> extra page space. Uh, so these these books are examples of that genre where they just. You can't make your own powers. I mean, you could. No, no one's stopping mm-hmm. you. But uh, they are damn well going to try and get them all in there. The things that are really unique about Heroes Unlimited are like uh, the the uh, attempts to recapture the the big age of comics in the eighties. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the fact that the you know by the edition that we're doing today, Heroes Unlimited Second Edition, uh, we went into mega heroes because because uh, Symbita really wanted to kind of play around with the concepts of of uh, whatever happened to the world of tomorrow books like that where like let's explore what it means to really be superman and so there's yeah. there's stuff in here that's interesting you can kind of peg the special events in comic books that were happening while he was writing this mm-hmm. yeah yeah th- there's a lot of inspiration that they took from the comics of the time to that they put into this game which is really cool mm-hmm. i also think um it's unique that this book has abraham lincoln on the cover uh, it's true. Okay, I just wanted to be clear I mean, about that. Yes, and, and an George, astronaut, George Washington, and an astronaut. Yeah, hmm. okay. I don't know how unique that is. I have to go look through my library. How many books have <laughs> Abraham Lincoln? I just like why is he on this superhero book? Well, it, it's kind well, of implied that you're playing in America. Yeah, that that's. I think one of the things. Uh, I don't know if it was in first edition, but I know it featured in second edition is also the idea of being a legacy hero got yeah. brought up in this mm-hmm. uh-huh. so the idea of having a history to who you are playing so you're like oh i'm the fifth generation of whatever this hero's title is mm-hmm. and throughout the history of this book they've kind or, or yeah this title they've kind of leaned on the cover in this captain america looking direction mm-hmm. uh the, the first edition had also had kind of a, a true blue american hero patriot type uh I mean, this guy is just Captain America with some cable parts on the cover of the current one. Yeah. Yeah. And a Mohawk helmet. Mm hmm. So the uh, I don't know why they've always gone with that true blue Americana thing, because it's not usually super represented in the book. But the same artist has done all the covers. And I, I think he just likes doing that. Yeah. Can I just say I love that this hero was worried that people wouldn't understand that he was American, so he had to put USA on the side of his pants. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they, he looks like um, Captain America if he were getting set for some Olympic speed skating. Oh, I can see that, yeah. yeah. It's Captain America if he hit random on the generator <laughs> a few times. <laughs> but kept it kept it in America theme somehow. Right. And yeah, he's got USA up the side of his pants so that you can tell who he is, much like, you know, the Street Fighter character DJ. <laughs> he's Captain, he's Admiral USA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's get yeah. into the history of this system. It has been around for a while. Mm-hmm. Since 1984? Uh, I think, is this 1989 for the first edition of uh, Heroes Unlimited? First edition actually came out in 1984, and then there oh, was okay. uh, two revisions in 1987 and then 1993. Oh, all right. Yeah, and then the, the first revision actually added the concept of crazy heroes uh, and magic, as well as the, the rules for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, mutants uh, that they basically literally ripped out pared down a little bit and put into the heroes book well Mm -hmm. i was gonna say that's because they went well we've already got this entire section from tmnt to put in here and for the crazy hero we have the crazy from rifts that we can also just wholesale rip off Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah why would you take things from other books and put them into this book like why would you not just make sure people have to buy the other books you know that's going to be a question for kevin simbita and uh (laughs) There, it just goes into the pile. I think it's get at me, boy, Kevin. Howdy. I have this questions. This is page count. I don't have to work on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a big thing. He's a big fan of of uh, using every part of the buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> for for example, there is art in this book that I that you can easily find in eight other Palladium books. All that's right. very true. Yeah, yeah. I, the, specifically the picture of a guy turning into a wolf mm-hmm. uh, over and, and it's like a uh, guy kind of a wolf, a little more of a wolf wolf. That picture uh-huh. is from 1983 or so. And it has been in, in at least eight books. Yeah. And also it's, the cover of several Animorphs books, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then the, the second edition actually came out in 1998. 
uh, which had a lot of the other options that we were talking about, the legacy heroes, the the mega heroes and whatnot. Um, I don't know if they added any other power categories uh, to the second edition aside from mega hero. I think they just co- uh, combined a few things. Uh, mm-hmm. The the heroes that aren't super powered uh, became a single category at that time. The, the, you'll see how the vigilante and the stage the stuff magician. That they just took from ninjas and super spies. Yeah. So the ancient master mm-hmm. and the stage magician and things like that. Yeah. And I think they... I think that's all they really changed in the uh, change up to second edition beyond adding mega heroes and kind of cleaning up the language. Mm-hmm. I noticed that they uh, they have a few extra uh, super abilities that were in different supplements that they put into the main book this mm-hmm. time. Yeah, the, the control in, in enlarge insects was stolen from Villains Unlimited. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Well, there was also in lar- the- I'm sorry. Are those two separate? <laughs> no, that's nope, the same ability. Power. Okay, I was mm-hmm. just worried you that like those were two and- separate powers that you had to pick from. I can control well, them. Well, I mean, it'd be great if all you them. had was in large insect and could not control them. <laughs> this came I would up like in it if our, all I had was in our Deadlands one where Alex was like. He's like, you have the power to summon bees, but you can't control them. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like it if all I had was control enlarged insect. Yep. So I'd have to find another guy who could make them big enough. <laughs> well, yeah, because there's the guy who just has enlarged insect yeah. and he's like, God, this is terrible. And then they find each other and they're like, they team up. reunited and it feels so good. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh. <laughs> so on that note. There are like so many sor- how many source books are there for this? I I literally can't count them. <laughs> I can't. I mean, it depends on if you're including the megaverse versus just Heroes Unlimited. Well, uh, I mean, technically, yeah. Yeah, cuz just Heroes Unlimited, you've got what? Scrapers, Century City, uh Villains Unlimited, Aliens Unlimited, uh, uh maybe a few others. Century but, Station, Three yeah, Powers yeah, Unlimited you. books. Yep. And then after that, you have to you expanded the megaverse. And now there's like 100 Rifts books that are technically compatible with this thing. Yeah. But, but there was also the Palladium version of a magazine. Oh, yeah. The Rifter. Yep. Yeah, oh, yeah. The, the Rifter, Rifter yep. would occasionally come out and just be like, oh, here's like 10 more powers for your game if mm-hmm. you want. Yep. But we're not going to print them anywhere else. So if you wanted the power of self explosion, then you had to get like Rifter number eight. Well, yeah. What? It is basically. <laughs> it, it's not that different from Dragon Magazine, really. Yeah. Except it, it's more expensive. Yep. It's basically uh, just a magazine that goes over things about the Palladium books, I believe. And mm-hmm. and sometimes they would print extra abilities or extra things you could do um, yeah. or things that you could get for the different systems that, that they have. A great source for short stories, superpowers, mm-hmm. poser art, more poser art. Yeah, there was Guns. actually a lot of good stuff in there. It's just yeah. uh, kind of pricey. Yeah. I want to know, for, for from all of you, what is the dumbest book in this vast array? Oh, oh I can I can do that just keeping to Heroes Unlimited real easily. Okay. Uh, and it would be the book Aliens Unlimited, which I love. I love that book to death because the, the section, it's got an expanded section for how to create aliens to play as in it. Yeah. Now, the important, and that part's great. That, that first 20 or so pages is great because it's how to create aliens and it's got all these neat new roles you can make. Here's the thing about how to make aliens in the Heroes Unlimited system. You roll a, a percentile die and it tells you like, okay, you're an alien, dog, cat bird frog uh crystal person uh dinosaur right that so it's just yeah. you're a, a bipedal one of those the rest the entire rest of the book is here's 10 dog species here's 10 cat species <laughs> here's 10 dinosaur species also all of these exist in the same universe and they're at war right now mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's insanely it, it, i mean it's just so weird to be like okay so the 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 doggy ons of of planet X are at war with the cat folk of the, of this other planet. Meanwhile, there's a second group of cat folk who are super mad at this group of pelican people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean uh, that the I, pelican people I, of avian. But Prime. I love that like none of them are like newly created species you're just like you're a dog person like i mean there's there's a little bit of that because you can get things like i'm you know a vaguely skeletal or something like that where you know there isn't really an equivalent race of uh, mobile skeletons wandering around earth Mm -hmm. but (laughs) that we know of but if there were it'd be really spoopy uh too spoopy but uh but i mean the fun thing is that the most of the book is given over to dogs cats birds uh, frogs and and it just it just seems so silly that universe where there's ten species of dog people in, in war at war with various species of dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I th- I think it's because they they effectively uh kind of hooked on to that TMNT 
mm-hmm. property early on. And then when they kind of lost the right to that, they probably were just like, you know, we need to add even more. We can't do turtles, but what if, just hear me out. <laughs> they tried so many pelicans. <laughs> well, the, I mean, even in Rifts, you had... Uh, some dimensional beings that were like the wolfen or mm-hmm. the the like fox people or whatever, and they basically were like, "Oh, we can double dip on that because we're played even. That's what we do. We double dip wherever possible." Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. you said wolfen, and all I can think is like a wolf <laughs> crossed with a dolphin. Oh and- sure, why not? Oh my god, now I'm picturing that too. <laughs> that would be way more interesting than the big wolf man. Uh huh. Yeah, they're they're basically just that. Klingons was- that look like furries. That's a like, were- a were dolphin. Oh man! A dolphin that turns <laughs> into, a wolf? turns into a wolf. The moon comes be a out and you turn into a dolphin. <laughs> if yeah. it was a wolf dolphin that turns into a human, it'd be a dolphin wear. It'd be a Dolph Lundgren at that point. Oh yeah, <laughs> turns into a brilliant, muscly human. Oh okay. Uh, um, well, speaking of all sorts of different source books, uh, what about this megaverse of uh, that Palladium's got going on here? We talked a little bit about that. Oh well, they've got. So many books. <laughs> it's just too many books. It's so many. Ryan, well, I mean, if is you wanted to go, the, is this where Chimera comes from? <laughs> you know, it might have a little bit of that uh, built into it because of the insanity that my my childhood was. I mean, Who hurt you, the, Ryan? <laughs> apparently, Palladium. <laughs> the books have. Like, you can do dimensional things, so you jump to different dimensions. Mm -hmm. And then they've got an entire, like, giant section that's the three galaxies, Mm -hmm. which is their... That's Rifts in Space. Yeah, that's their sort of main space setting. Mm -hmm. So the three galaxies uh, are all ridiculous nonsense that they've set several books in. And then you've got... You've got Palladium Fantasy. Yeah, you've got different Mm -hmm. dimensions. I have that one. I found it in the trunk of my car. (laughs) Nice. Yeah. Uh, I love that. That's their Dungeons and Dragons. Yep. <laughs> yeah, uh, you've got your rifts. You've got your systems failure. Mm-hmm. So that you've got a apocalyptic electric bug invasion. Yeah, that's yep. the one with bugs that come through your telephones. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you've got chaos. Oh, Earth. This is my phone's really been bugged. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> you've got chaos Earth, which is rifts before the rifts happened. Oh, well, it's while the rifts are. Oh, I'm sorry. That's I'm I'm confusing it with a different one, aren't I? Well, chaos Earth is. The rifts are happening, and it's sort of the uh, Earth is slowly collapsing like mm-hmm. a souffle in the cupboard right now. So is yeah, that, is that one... post, uh, what is that? Didn't the rifts start because of like a nuclear holocaust or something like that? Yeah, there was a yeah. nuclear exchange between two different countries, mm-hmm. and because those countries nuked each other, it started a chain reaction of all of the people dying released so much potential psychic energy Mm -hmm. that it reignited the ley lines of the world which then caused all sorts of natural disasters which killed more people which fed more energy which opened rifts to other dimensions which brought like demons and creatures out which killed more people and so on and so on and now there's elves which raised atlantis from the Mm -hmm. ocean yeah. And Japan it, disappeared into another dimension for yeah. about two hundred years. Oh. Yeah, in the middle of the middle of Australia, filled with a giant ocean. Like seriously, it's it's ridiculous what they kind of all threw together. But like the whole premise of the whole background of the story of Rifts, I find extremely fascinating. Yeah, and the end result is amazing. The end result yeah. of Rifts is. It's basically what happens if you set a kid loose on a bunch of toys and they haven't seen all the movies yet. <laughs> yeah. So they're just like smacking Darth Vader into a Triceratops and they're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And that's that's basically what Riffs is. And pretty much every single source book has more character classes that you can choose from. Yeah. But, yeah. And maybe two that are good. Yeah. That's the, that, yeah. that's kind of to its detriment. But still. Yeah. It you is have true. Like, what are you? Well, this is the burglar class. And then we released a different source book and it is the thief class. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then there's the gypsy burglar class. And whoops, a daisy. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> I, but I thought there wasn't a meta plot. So like. The Where Riffs, did Japan Riffs go? Has a, Riffs has a clear meta plot. Oh, Japan meta plot. came back. Okay. The, the meta plot is, is shenanigans, but it's there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there are aspects. There's basically 18 different end of the world scenarios playing out at Riffs at any given time, and mm-hmm. it's up to you if you want to go deal with it or not. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. But nothing is like, here are the main characters who are doing things, and this is the plot moving forward. They only really moved the plot forward once. The Coalition War campaign. Yeah, Coalition attacked... Uh, another city in mm. rifts and that was 
basically the only time they've really moved it forward. Yeah, it's yeah. been and a lot of setup at, at around the same time period, usually. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I mean, ultimately, all of this is rifts. Yeah, that's yeah, it's not Heroes Unlimited, which is an entirely different dimension, right? Yeah. But the, <laughs> the the common thread between most, if not all, of them is this concept of rifts and interdimensional travel, mm-hmm. where you can literally open up a rift on on a ley line or a nexus of a ley line, and travel to a different world or a different dimension. Um, and they have rules for what happens when you go to this other place. You, you might be a superhero that has some really powerful superpowers and then those powers become enhanced because you're on a world that has all this extra stuff in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your powers might become mega damage. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh. yeah. I'm so glad that we don't need to deal with that. No, we don't have to talk about we... mega damage any further than we just did. All right. Let's go over some of the basic terms and concepts that we need to be able to actually create characters in this system. Uh, and there was quite a few that I had uh, penned down before, and I know you added a few to the list. <laughs> so how about we uh, tackle attributes first? Absolutely. There are eight. And uh, I think only about three of them do anything. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of them w- appear to have been added in early development of Palladium properties and then just forgotten about for forever. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's just have, us. Oh, like, well, I found uses for all of them. I, mm-hmm. <laughs> What? But here's the list. Oh. Uh, you've got three mental stats that you start with. Mm-hmm. Uh, IQ, which at least will give you a percentage bonus if it's high enough to your skills. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got your mental endurance, which is mostly just there to stop people from messing around with your brain with psionics. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's also your ability to resist torture yep. and horror factors. And mm-hmm. insanity. Yeah. Uh, you've got your mental affinity, which is just sort of how likable you are. It's basically charisma, mm-hmm. but all it does is give you a percent chance to like impress people. And even so. then, only if you are at a 16 or higher. And, and at that point, it's super yep. low. Yep. One of the interesting things that that teaches us is that in Palladium, almost no one is persuasive. Yeah. Like, well, like even you're, a little you're bit. You're average persuasive. Yeah, the average person does not have anything more than a 10 in a stat, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which means they don't have the ability to be impressive. They yeah. just can't. You get Let's... a 2% chance to be charming or impressive starting at like 16 or something like that. Yeah. And and uh, that's not an, a bonus. That's not 2% bonus to your regular chance to charm or impress. That is your full chance, yeah. which they, means that someone with a 10 has no chance. They call it trust or intimidate. It's basically ah. a skill once you get to that point. So it's, yeah. it's effectively uh, kind of forcing an NPC to trust you or mm-hmm. to intimidate the NPC um to to drive the story that way uh so i just love that something like 96 percent of average or or of people in the palladium universe cannot intimidate wow actually 16 starts at 40 percent oh okay but then below that it's nothing right yeah below that zero yeah yeah Yeah, so okay once you get through that you get into the physical stats which at least all have something they do Mm -hmm. yep uh you've got of course you only get any bonuses from your stats at 16 or higher anything less than 16 it may as well not even exist Mm -hmm. so uh you've got your physical strength your physical prowess which is dexterity in any other game Mm -hmm. uh you've got your physical endurance or constitution uh you've got physical beauty is a stat and again (laughs) like mental affinity it is a stat that just gives you a percent skill to charm yeah charm Charm slash impress Yeah, and it works the exact same way. If you're below a 16, you are you might as well be at a two because you have it does it changes nothing. Mm-hmm. You just have a zero percent chance to charm or impress. So, how is beauty a st- well, well, that's pretty common in games from the 80s. Usually, they, for some reason, they call it comeliness, which yeah. cool, why, cool. that word cool. is. There's a lot of games that have either beauty, appearance, comeliness, mm-hmm. something like that, and it's because there was a point where people were looking at the stat of charisma Mm -hmm. and wanted to be able to say but i want to also know how pretty i am yeah i I think my favorite thing to know about that is that the comeliness stat came into existence and this game doesn't even have it but the idea of quantifying beauty the comeliness stat came into existence in a dragon magazine article about how to play as women wow oh yeah i mean that's not Mm -hmm. surprising given the age of the game 
but mm-hmm. it's uh, it's from like 1978 or something yeah. that they were like they're like how to play the distaff side of dungeons and dragons and and they you swap your charisma for comeliness and you have a minimum comeliness to be a variety of th- it was i mean Do and then there was better. how to play the full staff side yeah. i mean you, you have to assume as as sexist or as a, an attempt at being progressive as a game could be in 1978 and it was not much yeah and 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 that just pretty much bore out a wave that lasted through the 80s of people wanting to be able to quantify in numbers how hot they were. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then one last stat, which is just your speed. Mm-hmm. So instead of a lot of games will have movement be a derived stat from mm-hmm. like, oh, how uh, strong and dexterous are you? And that's your movement. Uh, in this, you actually roll randomly for your speed. Yep. And certain mm-hmm. abilities and certain uh, skills can increase your speed. Mm-hmm. And that's literally your land speed. It yeah. has nothing to do with like the number of attacks you get or anything like that. It's just how fast you are. Fast you There's run. even a straight up conversion chart. Um, if you'd like to know your mile per hour. And actually it is feet per second is your speed number. Mm-hmm. The other thing that I always found funny, and they don't put it in the books anymore, probably because it drew a lot of complaints, is that the, the intelligence stat in this game is called IQ. And in early books, Simbita would put a little aside in there that was like, yeah, to figure out your character's actual IQ, just multiply your result by 10. Uh, yeah, that's right. I remember that. Mm-hmm. So, so and and uh, your range can go from three to mm-hmm. thirty. Thirty. Yeah. So you could have a character with uh, thirty IQ by that standards, and or a character with three hundred IQ. Yeah, that makes mm-hmm. sense. Obviously. Yeah, and mm-hmm. and he's still putting that in the books nowadays, even though IQ is, you know, kind of a weird concept to be included. Intelligence feels a little less clinical. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing to note with this is Palladium makes you do a 3D6 uh, straight down the line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't get to place your stats where you want them. You aren't doing 4D6 drop lowest. There's no chance to do an array. Mm -hmm. It is 3D6 down the line. And if you roll a 16, 17, or 18, you get to roll an additional D6 and add it on. Mm -hmm. If that's a 6, you get to do it one more time. Yes. So, so if giving, you're if you're good, you get to be really good. Yeah. Yes. That's mm-hmm. the weird thing is no one has a sixteen in a stat to start because if you roll the sixteen, you roll again. Mm-hmm. That's true. So sixteen doesn't exist for most people unless you manage to yeah, you get a addition to it. Yeah. 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 Um, it's interesting that it's it's one of the more restrictive dice systems. Uh, it's roughly equivalent to second edition Dungeons and Dragons type one rolling, mm-hmm. but. That's the only time that's ever been the main version. Even in Dungeons and Dragons, you normally roll 46 drop low, assign where you want. That's like the usual standard. Yeah. I This is where one of my home rules uh, kicked in for uh, pretty much probably the first one was 46 drop one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Most people most people house rule this immediately. It's just sort of amusing that there's at least 18 role playing games that exist because of some uh, a, a palladium that all use this ultra restrictive, mm-hmm. very old school system of dice rolling. Yes, but we're not going to have to do them in the order that you roll that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The the one thing that I will say about that, that is, I mean, it's not good, but at least <laughs> it's not <laughs> terrible, is that because for the most part, your stats don't mean anything unless they're 16 or above. If you don't, like if you roll poorly, if you go down the line, and you're like, boy, I sure did roll up a crappy character. If your character has straight threes, they are exactly as good as the person who has straight 12s. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter. It's it's just a uh, a guide for role playing at that point, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah. I think the only thing that matters below 16 is speed. Yeah. Yes. And luckily, no one ever keeps their speed very low because of, uh, well... There are uh, skills that give you a ton of speed uh-huh. addition. A thing we'll talk about in the future, yeah. Yeah. So you can't really, like, plan out what kind of character you want to make. You just have to, like... No. Cool. I mean, you're not cool. supposed to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can plan I mean, out the again, you class. can house rule. Yeah. You, right. you You can pick your class. You can you can do all that sort of stuff. But there are so much randomness that, that you have to go through. You don't know how good you're going to be at anything, effectively. I mean, we did Traveler already, so it's fine. I can handle it. But uh, all right, <laughs> wow, you guys did Traveler. This is going to be a walk in the park. Yeah, <laughs> you won't did. even die during character creation, so it's fine. Yeah, yeah, we did not die. Uh, Ryan really had a real rough. Well, time, then you're though. doing it wrong. I had a very rough time. <laughs> well, apparently, <laughs> in like the newer editions, it's a lot harder. It is. Um, yeah. But. In early Traveler, you basically played as space retirees, the ones who made it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, well, speaking of skills, uh, how about we go over a little bit what the skills are all about uh, in this game? Because they're they're different from most other games uh, that are out there, from what I've realized. Yeah, the <laughs> the weird thing about this is everything is percentage based even though the game for every other rule is d20 based. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in addition to that, there's no baseline for skills. It's not like I put a point into a skill and it gives me 5% or something. Mm -hmm. You buy a skill and then you just have that at whatever percent it comes at. So it might have the starting skill is 24%, or it might be a starting skill of 73%. Mm -hmm. You might get 5% per level addition. You might get 2% per level addition. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who knows? It's up to the whimsy of Kevin <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> Why? Why would you it's... buy a skill that doesn't... like? Well, so wouldn't well, you just go through and pick the skills that have the highest... No, some skills are harder to do than others. Like, diffuse bombs is probably harder than driving a car. So you'll start out at a lower percentage... Yes. And then they're also harder to gain uh, ability in. They, yeah. they take more training. Mm -hmm. So they, they give you a lower percentage per level. That said, when you go through the list, it looks a lot less like something that makes that kind of logical sense and a lot more like someone was fiddling a number up and down by a point or two on, a, on an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. And I think the most notorious one for me has always been Prowl which is the only stealth <laughs> skill that exists in this game, uh -huh. and it starts at, like, 24%. Mm -hmm. Depending on where you get it from. Yeah, now, if you're... <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> because so there are also uh, skills that are your main skills that you will get a bonus to occasionally. Mm -hmm. There are secondary skills, which you will generally just get at a the flat starting percentage. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are skills that you get from your class, so it'll tell you specific ones rather than you get to pick from any of this category. Mm -hmm. It'll say you get these at this specific percentage. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you are playing something that's like, oh, I am a thief class, then it might start you with Prowl at a decent percentage. But if you were playing anyone that didn't start with it, then you would have to just pick it up and pray that you rolled well yeah and there's <laughs> additionally a cu couple other physical skills that give you prowl as well yeah that's true uh like Wait, uh, skills give you acrobatics other skills? or something yeah acrobatics and gymnastics skills yeah. that you can get that actually give you other skills as well that are what? different percentages than if you would have taken those skills by themselves yeah, and the average person, the average class in this book, it's just called power categories, but in other games it's usually OCC or PCC or something like that, uh, will have three different categories of skills that they get. Uh, they are the uh, assigned skills that John was talking about, the elective skills, which are skills you get to choose and that you get a bonus in, and then secondary skills, which are skills you get to choose and you don't get a bonus in. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you end up with a vast array of these things. Um, <laughs> most of them pretty low to the point where you wouldn't necessarily want to roll them or super high with their, they all, they all have a built in max of 98%. Mm -hmm. um, with very rare exceptions. I believe the hardware class can go above a hundred percent. Yeah. And, and, and then that's with penalties. I believe 99% for a couple of their skills mm -hmm. are the max. N uh, notably, when you when you talk about hardware, that brings up a fourth category of skills that exist, which are skills that are unique to classes. Uh -huh. uh, several of the hardware classes come with their own skills that no one else can get into. Uh, those are the ones that can go up above 100 so you can deal with the penalties. Uh, they look super powerful because you're like, oh, I can hack computers. So I have this 85 percent chance to hack computers. And then you look at the list of penalties and it'll be things like hack a normal computer at a bank minus 50 percent. Yeah, and you're like, oh, well, okay. I guess I'm I'm really Wait, bad so at normal computers are harder to hack than. Oh, no, no, that's just the lowest like, low range. Hack of... the government <laughs> minus ninety percent. Like, yeah, what? what? <laughs> so uh, it's it's uh it, it's sort of amusing how they wanted to kind of keep that grounded. Uh, when meanwhile there's another guy in the game who's got like telemechanics and it's just like, like I, I just possessed the computer. Who cares? <laughs> 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 that's actually how computers really work, though. We yeah, all know that. yeah. Um, uh, I yeah. can see spending a lot of time reading through this and like mathing out exactly what things are better than other things like well i mean what the, the first thing you do combination is you the, well here i'll tell you the perfect combination it's spend as many of your of your elective skills as you can on physical skills because well, they give you bonuses to your stats yep. spend as many secondary skills yeah, if they're allowed they, to be some of them are not allowed to be secondary skills because mm -hmm. the whole point is your primary skills that you get will have a bonus to the percentages mm -hmm. most of the physical skills are just 
uh, additions to your stats mm-hmm. yep. or your hit points or whatever, not percentage. They yep. don't have a skill based to them. Mm-hmm. So you spend the secondary skills that you can because they don't give you percentage bonuses. Yeah. Here's, here's a secret you should learn right away about about every character that's ever been made in every Palladium game. Every one of them is a trained boxer. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Every single one of them the in most the whole history. Useful skill unless, in the game. Unless the game specifically says you can't take boxing, every character has boxing. Because yeah. it gives you an extra melee a- or attack per melee round. Yeah. And it's the only skill that does that. So every single person is a trained boxer. Yeah. Okay. Well, every single hero. Which kind of makes oh, sense yeah. when you think about it. Uh, when you go back to the comic books and stuff like that, almost every single uh, of those grounded heroes is a boxer or or something yeah. like that. But I mean, this is this is ubiquitous across the line. Yeah, exactly. Every single megaverse character. Yeah. Every ninja, every riffs elf, every single person is a trained boxer. Mm-hmm. Oh, you are one hundred percent punch clops in this. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> because it's it's not only uh, melee attacks. I mean, an attack is basically an action, and you can still use other things during yeah, your if action. I want to shoot more eye beams during a melee round, I will be a boxer mm-hmm. uh-huh. because apparently my ability to box lets me shoot more eye beams. Yeah. Lets you just shoot your rifle more. Yep. It's uh it's it's completely necessary and it's kind of hilarious. I, I, I wanna say uh my head canon is that taking boxing gets you into a certain headspace that allows you to focus a little bit more and be a little bit more efficient with your actions. Mm-hmm. So I usually just when I would run games, I would just tell players to subtract one from their total number of skills and start with boxing so that no player would, would get caught unawares, make the mistake, and then feel bad. Uh huh. Or if someone was playing one of those classes where they're like, oh, I want to play this cool class, and then it says you can't take boxing, and then you're just screwed. Yeah. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. So, what just a... Uh, good job, game. Mostly, the skill the skill percentages, you, you don't need to math them out. You yeah. choose the secondary skills that you can, or sorry, the physical skills you can afford to get your stats up, and then you pick the rest of them for fun, because yep. most of them are not going to come up in an average game. This game is pretty big on skills that are realistic, mm-hmm. but not, you. I mean, you get things like anthropology yeah. and uh, ancient boat building, which just aren't going to come up very often. What's really cool is that the, the primary skills that you can get... Um, you get those from your education, and they come in different skill programs. So you're not just mm-hmm. picking skills onesie twosie here and there. You're actually going and saying, "I want this group of science skills," and then it says you get this, 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 and then choose a couple others from these categories, uh, which I find to be really interesting when you're trying to flesh out your character's background. Oh yeah, absolutely. And the nice thing is, because it's Palladium. You get to randomly roll what your education is. Yep. Yeah, you can be high school graduate. You can be like, I'm in the Army Reserves. Now, to be fair, with a couple of weird exceptions, mostly ones where you have a military background, it's just a progressively better roll. Yeah. Like if you roll a 91, you just have a thousand more skills than a person who rolled a five. Yeah, because you're a doctor at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they don't try to fix. They don't try to balance the scales by making the person who has a high school education like street smart or something. It's just you have less skills. Yeah. Oh. But that's, that's OK, because honestly, getting less skills sometimes in Palladium is a good thing. You're like, oh, I don't need to write down as much. Good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You guys are over there and I'm two hours into this game already. <laughs> You're still building your characters. You guys still figure out which type of math you want to write down and I'm out here kicking butt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember being super proud of a Ninjas and Super Spice character I made once because he was a gadgeteer, uh, a tinker gadgeteer, which meant he had five starting skill programs. So I had to have two separate pages that are just skills. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Ouch. None of which I was ever going to use. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at that point, like, how do you even play that game? Like, how do you? I, you just never roll. Yeah. I mean, unless the, the unless the DM is like, OK, guys, I really need someone to make an electrical engineering roll. Yeah. Uh, with a minus 20 percent bonus. And, you, and you're like, oh, I guess. Oh, yes. The minus 20 percent bonus. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're spending the whole time, like, flipping through your 12 pages of uh-huh. sheet. Like, do I have that? Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a slow game. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> the nice thing is then you would gain a level and you'd have to be like. Okay, now I can't just say I'm putting, like, plus 5% and everything. I have to get mm-hmm. the book out and look up each individual skill because oh, they yeah. all increase at a different level. Correct notation when you're writing your own character sheet in this game is to write the number and then the plus what the other number is, yes. the, yep. the, the gain number. You have to do you it. You have to do it. You you Because mm-hmm. some skills have the same name, start different starting percentages, and different bonuses per level, mm-hmm. uh, depending on where you got the skill from. I quit. 
<laughs> here's here's let me uh, I'll I give quit. you a, a, I quit. <laughs> here's some good here's some good news for you Amelia almost all of that is stuff we can do after the show all right yeah the, you don't because have to worry because about. none of it's interesting or yeah. I can get up and walk away before we get to that point <laughs> this this is only painful when you're actually playing the game okay. it's so, amazing to me that at its height this was in the top three most popular role playing games well Rifts was yeah yeah. yeah. And people still and I, continued making role playing games after this game. <laughs> yeah. People were like, you know what we need is more of these. I yeah. really wish that it right around that same point, if Palladium had also introduced an OGL. Oh, they were just like, yeah, you can write books in the Palladium setting oh. as long as you put our oh, license. I thought you meant they would put out a D20 version of Rift. No, they would never try that. And <laughs> no. like, I know they made Savage Rifts now, but, but, uh, but. In the if in the mid '90s, they were like, "Hey, anyone can write a Palladium book." Mm-hmm. I just wish. And you were like, at the time, "No, that's already the case." <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, but at the time, the three big ones were: you had your D and D, you had Rifts, and you had Vampire the Masquerade. Mm-hmm. And I would have loved to have seen the Zeitgeist latch on to Palladium rather than uh, Vampire. Hey, there's there's still time is young, my friend. I mean, there were so many White Wolf esque clones and people making thing for mature gamers only. Mm-hmm. And I would have loved if instead of going that route, all game designers were like, "Oh, what we need is just kitchen sink material at all times." <laughs> I need to get 500 different skills with different levels, yep. and I need to be the most convoluted thing ever. Yeah, it seems like there was a point where it could have broken either way: either more story driven games or more GURPSes. And and uh, it, we we went down one path, and now people don't make these. You can build whatever you want style engines anymore. I mean, they do, but they're very more very much more story driven. You like fate and so well, yeah, on. So you can build whatever you want, not with points, but just you say whatever you have. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there was a time where where it looked like maybe GURPS and Palladium were going to be the next big thing, and oh, I guess man. what Hero System. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I'm I'm glad it went the way it. Did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Most people should be. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Well, we're not done with skills yet. Because oh <laughs> there's there's also the hand to hand skills that you can choose. Oh yeah, and the, and the mer- the uh, the weapon proficiencies. Oh yeah, and weapon proficiencies. <laughs> um, okay, so hand to hand types. Uh, there's what four of them in the main book, right? In yeah. in this book, there are four. Yeah, you get basic, expert, martial arts, and assassin. Assassin. I think there's actually an alignment restriction on assassins, isn't there? Yes, you have to be not good in order to get assassin. I think Might I be, don't know if it says specifically only evil or if you can be anarchist. I think and also you can I think it's anarchist and below. Yeah, if you're going in that direction. Mm-hmm. So, uh, by the way, if you're new to so Palladium, the, the alignment system in this you book don't want is, assassin. By the way, because assassin is garbage. It, well, it starts garbage. Yes. I promise. It starts Ryan out garbage. That this time, garbage. I would make a nice character. Yes. <laughs> and assassin, assassin is hard to is harder to get to, I believe. It is, and it costs more of your skills if you want to take it. Mm-hmm. It's basically a bad guy martial art. It's it's okay. entirely skippable. Yeah, yeah. Is that a different type of? Do bad guys do martial arts well, differently? One of the things about Palladium that that can be kind of infuriating is that it doesn't really do monster manuals i mean it yep. kind of does there, there are some that exist but nine nine times out of ten they just want you to build more characters and have those fight the pcs mm-hmm. uh and, and so that means that you need a martial art for your bad guys yeah one okay. that's that's menacing even if it isn't quite as effective yeah because okay. you they'll either start out with basic which is just you know basic combat there's expert mm-hmm. which is like i'm trained to do combat and then there's martial arts which you're you're actually a step above expert I think experts kind of like the military sort of training, I guess. Mm-hmm. And yeah, then, it's like being yeah. a Green Beret. The big thing was uh, the reason I say assassin is garbage is it takes longer to get uh, extra attacks per round mm-hmm. in assassin than it does in expert or martial arts. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's uh, so you will attack less often with assassin than you will the other ones. Mm-hmm. So in my mind, that's just terrible. It's kind of funny to see because it's like. It looks like he thought that it was super dangerous and menacing because it has like these death blow things and stuff in it, Mm -hmm. which literally you have to call that you're trying for a death blow and then roll like a 19 or 20 on a D20 for it to work. Of course, this is also at like level 14. Yeah. And no one, even Simbita is like, oh, yeah, most people will never get above like level eight. Yeah. Yeah. Now, and and not only levels don't really matter, but, but, but to get right back to the point. 
you remember how like in old Dungeons and Dragons, like strength was super heavily valued. Like they'd be like, oh, if you want to be a half orc, you can get a plus two strength. Mm-hmm. But you have to take two penalties. But and eventually D&D realized that strength doesn't really matter that much. And they just kind of valued it the same as everything else. They, they never realize anything in, in the Palladium system. Hand to hand Assassin has been reprinted dozens of yeah. times. Yeah. It's just I just find that sort of thing hilarious. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've never learned anything. No. <laughs> well, obviously, no. <laughs> we don't learn from mistakes here. Well, we never. I'm Kevin Simbita. I've never made a mistake. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if I do, I'll learn from it. <laughs> <laughs> Call me when it happens. Uh huh. Oh boy. So hey, it looks like there's more stuff. <laughs> There are more things you need to know <laughs> before we can actually dive into creating characters. Okay. Because this system, if you want, I can just fly through those. Yeah, yeah. These ones are pretty basic. They're just things that your character has or mm-hmm. different stats that it doesn't really apply to much of anything. Yeah. Yeah. These are very simple. Hit points is your actual life force. STC is the da- is the structural damage of physical objects and also of you. So it's like less hit pointy hit points, but you also have them. Yeah. SDC is like if you got punched, you would get a bruise. Hit point is you would like break a bone. Yes. Yep. PPE is potential psychic energy. It is the spell power. Uh, uh, it's mana for, for wizards. ISP is internal strength or inner, inner strength, strength points. It is. It is psychic energy for psychics, which is funny because it doesn't have psychic in the thing, <laughs> or PPE does. Uh, okay. AR is is armor rating. It's the uh, ro- the roll on a d20 that someone needs to naturally, or I'm sorry, not naturally, needs to roll over in order to damage you at all. Okay. Uh, uh, yes. And there's, <laughs> there, there's, there you go. there's natural AR versus uh, regular AR as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, natural AR, if you get hit below the AR, it does no damage. Um, and if you hit above the AR, then it does damage to the natural armor which is probably part of you um Mm -hmm. and then the regular armor has normal ar which if you get below the ar it does sdc damage to the armor itself Mm -hmm. and if you get above it then it just hits you so is sdc like your strain versus Uh, sdc yeah it's like um it's flesh wounds so it's bruises scrapes things like that Mm -hmm. hit points is you've basically been beaten up enough that now you're taking actual damage so instead of just being like i took a bruise it's my leg broke and it has optional rules for if you get really messed up things like now you have a limp Uh yeah the other thing is uh people have hit points and sdc inanimate objects only have sdc yes and Uh so there are some uh character types like the robot which has only sdc because they don't have hit points Mm mm-hmm Okay, so if it has a soul, it has hit points. If if you're made of meat, yeah, if you're made of meat, that's effectively okay. it. If you if you're made of flesh, meat sacks hit points. Yeah, got and, it. And let's let's just leave the megaverse out of this because it changes dramatically when you introduce mega damage again. Yeah. But but let's just not. Don't please. please yeah, don't. no, that's 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 more than we needed to know. Once we cover rifts, which will probably be never now. Um, <laughs> oh, please call us though. I know. Oh. Um. Ugh. That's after I quit the show in, like, season 42. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so, other things, uh, some classes have budgets. Yeah. Effectively, some classes, that's their power source, is the amount of money they have to go buy a bunch of robot parts or supercar pieces or something. In this game. Okay, most so game, most, uh, yeah. Or, Except, I, no, yeah. it's mostly, like, if you're... <laughs> Maxwell Smart? I was going to say, if you're, uh, whatever his name is, the uh, the Knight Rider guy. Oh, oh yeah. Um, uh, Kit. Wait, Kit's the car. Kit's the yeah, car. Kit's the car. Yeah, because Michael Knight. He gets Michael Knight mm-hmm. is funded by a uh, like research group that makes an intelligent car for him, yeah. and that's basically what you are. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because instead of being like the gad, the hardware person would be someone who makes it, and Batman would be someone who buys it themselves. Whereas this is someone has gifted you a robot. Well, let's yeah. be let's be realistic here. You can roll to see where that money came from. That's true. That is true. There's random rolls stacked on top of random rolls within this book. Yep. It's very true, mm-hmm. um, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do, it's a guilty pleasure. I do. Yeah, it is a guilty pleasure. I love the amount of different options and weird tables that are in these books. And I know mm-hmm. Amelia loves tables, so maybe I, do. I actually really do love random so, tables. So maybe so that will be a redeeming quality of this game for her. So. All right. Um, the well, last concept we talked about it a little bit: attacks per melee round. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, that's basically how many attacks you can do in a 15 second period of time. Every round of combat is 15 seconds. You roll initiative, you go down the order. Once everybody's out of attacks, you go to the next round, you roll initiative again. You can also trade them to dodge. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you want to defend and you don't have an automatic yeah. defense, mm -hmm. then you have to use an action to do yes. it. So characters that are trained in martial arts have automatic parry, which means mm -hmm. you don't have to use an attack per melee to parry, but you have to use an attack to dodge. Some, yeah. And there are certain attacks that cannot be parried. And some superpowers give you an automatic dodge, which allows you to dodge without using an attack per melee. And that's the hotness. That is the best. It is so nice. But that, that bonus for auto dodge is separate from your normal dodge bonuses. Mm -hmm. Because of course it is. Yeah, why not? Why would you want to track everything all at once? <laughs> <you> track <laughs> Dozens of small numbers. And yeah. this is why my custom character sheet is literally a solid full two pages yeah. of shenanigans. Uh, well, um, <laughs> should we do this? Yeah. yeah. Are we ready? I, I think is, I'm ready. This part's fun. I, it's it's only the part when you have to write down the million skills that's not fun. Yeah. Okay. Let's make some Wait. people. Let's make some people. Let's make some people. All right. Where do we start? With rolling dice? Yep. Oh, yes. So oh. are we doing the four drop low? No, we're doing it by the book. Oh, by the book? By the book. I already rolled a bunch book. of stats in advance. So I love the book. We are going to be doing um, attribute rolling. So we're going to do 3d6. Okay. Um, and then that's going to be your stat. If you get a 16, 17, or 18, you get to roll an extra d6, like we said. And if you get a six on that, you get to go, you get to roll one more. Okay. All right, here we go. Oh, 16. Nice. I started out with a 16. I got a 16 as well. Started out. Oh, what am I going to get? Oh, and it went to 17. Oh, I got 15. <laughs> 16 plus six. <laughs> Roll again. This is the best part of rolling your stats. And then number three. Uh, so what is that? Uh, 25? 25. Holy cow, my guy yeah. is smart. <laughs> oh, I'm rolling so bad. <laughs> That's fine. Like I said, a three and a 15 is functionally the same. Yeah. I, I mean, so you're, 15, you're expected to role play eight better. And seven. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a 20 on my physical prowess. That's the one you really want a high one in, oh, know. because that's bonus to hit and to dodge. Yeah. Yup. All right. M E. That's ten. That's not bad. Yes, a seventeen. Oh my god, you guys! Oh sweet, oh. I also have a twenty on my physical prowess. Ooh, oh, let's nice. be buddies. Oh, we're prowess buddies. Prowess pals. We're we're in the prowess pals. <laughs> I'm only on physical strength because I got a bonkers IQ. Oh, there it is. Physical strength five. Nice. <laughs> hey, I feel like your character is shaping up already. Uh -huh. I really wanted it so that my only high stat was my beauty. <laughs> but that didn't work out. <laughs> 14. It's okay. I'll be I'll be hot enough for everybody. Oh, I've got a thanks. 21 there. 21. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just really hoping I get all the superpowers that add to beauty. I know. I got that extraordinary physical beauty physical and godlike aura. Endurance. And I think also having wings yeah, feathered wings. gives you uh it does. more beauty because mm -hmm. people are like, "Ooh, you're like an angel." Mm -hmm. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, well, my highest is a 15, so... Nice. 13. I think extraordinary physical strength might do it as well, because you're so muscly. Ooh, You've got that great so definition. Much. I don't think it gives you extra beauty for extraordinary physical strength. That low body fat. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, no. Oh, that was, that's okay. I've only got six speed. Oh, that's the easiest one to face. but it's so bad. <laughs> I can run 4.09 miles per hour, according to my spreadsheet. All right, so we got our stats. It's like walking. I know, right? Uh, yeah. I, that's my max speed. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm all set. I've got everything here. All right. Now, all right. we can't determine our SDC yet, though we can do hit points. Yes, hit points is endurance plus a D6, although that can also that, be modified that, by some yeah, of the physical skills. Do endurance last because, yeah, your physical skills will increase that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got our stats. What's next? Well, in the book, it would be determining our superpowers. Yes, yeah. and the superpower origin, because you, normally you'd want to jump to education level, but some of them control that. Yeah, I believe Alien has a different education level. 
Um, As yeah. does, uh, I think, hardware because they have their own education yep. system. Yeah. So yeah, I think and uh, picking our picking or rolling our super power category. I think we all know that I'm going to randomly roll for what my category As am I, is. though I am reserving the right to re-roll on like bionics or part, anything where I have to go build a robot, because it takes forever. That's true. I, I find it extremely fun to do that, but yeah, it, for the purposes of this podcast, that might be a good thing to avoid. Well, hey, I'm not stopping you. You go right ahead. <laughs> okay, so there are a lot of different power categories that you can be in this game. Now, if you want to roll randomly, it does not allow you to pick Mega Hero. Yes. That's true. You have to choose Mega Hero. And even then, you still have to roll again. Yeah. Well, yeah, because Mega Hero can be one of like uh, six or yeah. seven of the different power categories. Because mm-hmm. Mega Hero has its own random power table because you can't be a Mega Bionic. Yeah. So it's the power category. Oh, my goodness. There's so many of them. Alien, bionics, experiments, hardware. Well, there's the table here if you want to just roll on the table. Yeah. Experiments, robotics, bionics, and implants, special training, mutants, psionics, physical training, magic, hardware, aliens. Or get your degree. Mm-hmm. Gun repair. <laughs> TV VCR repair. I love that physical training is separate from a special training. Yeah. It's it's well, yeah, weird. special training is I'm a stage magician and physical training is I'm Batman, which is hilarious because ancient master is under special training, uh, even though he's literally just a really good martial artist. But he's a special, you think it'd be physical training. Special training. What are you going to do, though? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, goodness gracious. So I want to hear what you all are going to be and then I'll pick based on that. Oh, I'm going to roll. Well, right. That's fine. 90, then I get to pick 92, baby. The only role I ever want. You got you got aliens. I got aliens. Oh, nice. I love aliens. I got nine. Ooh, experiment. That's Ooh, a really experiment. good category. Experiment yeah. is one of my favorites. Okay. Uh, I got a 74, so I'm up in magic. Magic? Oh, now that's I'm going to have to determine what type of magic I am as well. Yeah, you can roll percentile, and I'll tell you right now. Don't. I will. Don't tell me. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> or you could pick. It's up to you. Yeah. He's not going <laughs> to. Oh, that's right. There's uh, There's four different magical categories. Yeah, I could I could be a wizard, I could be a Thor, I yeah. could be uh, a, a Shazam. Shazam. Uh, and the last one the is a uh, like an Isis, or yeah, or a Green Lantern. Mm-hmm. It's where you have an object, but it isn't necessarily a uh, a weapon, right? Yeah. Why do you go with Isis? I, I, I don't mean, know. I, that's a '70s TV show character. I mean, she's back now. She's on Legends of Tomorrow these days. Oh, wow. she's back in Pogville. They're just not calling her Isis for Obvi- some reason. I can't. Reason. I can't think. Yeah. You know, some reason. <laughs> now there is a page of optional rules. To determine what your character is like. Yes, there is. Oh yeah, I do want to go. This through includes those rules. birth order, yep. weight, height, age, disposition, land of origin. Yep. I mean, what? I'm not going to roll on some of those because obviously I'm not from around here. I'm from space. Right, yo. that's very space. true. Well, you could what roll page where you landed. This on? Um, that it's, is on. It's 25. Yeah, it's coming up. It's on page. Yeah, 25. Okay. Optional it is rules. right after we determine what our alignment is. Yes. Okay. Scrupulous. <laughs> Scrubbles. I got them scrubs. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll go over alignment when we get to that to that step. So we're on step three, determining super abilities. Um, gosh, I I wanted to be either aliens or experiment or magic. But those are all already taken for. So, well, I'll tell um, you what, I will not get mad at you if you if you're also an alien. We could just be alien buddies. That's very true. I mean, there's so be. many random roles in there. Kind of want to show off the system a bit, uh, just a little bit though. Um, yep. so I think I'm gonna go with mutant. Okay. Yeah, we'll go mutant and uh, mix up some of the weird superpowers that they got. Good. All right. Nobody's a psionic. Well, unless you are a mutant psionic. I believe experiment can get psionics as well. Sure can. We're an alien psionic. Who even knows? Yeah, everyone can still be psionic. I think Except even magic me. maybe can probably get some psionic power somehow. <laughs> That's very possible. I think palladium I magic weapon does. I think palladium fantasy allows you to roll randomly uh, to see if you get psionic powers as any character class. That yeah. is also rifts. Also rifts if oh, you're yeah. a human. That's right. Twenty five percent chance. Mm-hmm. All right. So we've got our uh, effectively our classes, our power categories. Um, what is next on the list? I think, I'm sure John is already over there rolling like a birth order and stuff. Oh, oh that's education when you would determine your education. Yeah, so ah. determining education and skills. 
Um, I'm going to have to skip that because aliens do a different thing. Yes, aliens do a different thing. So <laughs> if you turn to page, it is on page 44 is where it starts. So for the rest of us, uh, the, all us non-aliens, uh, there is a uh, education level table from 0 to 100 uh, that will give us our education level that we uh, will start the game with. So this is a D100 roll. Now, I am going to have to determine what I am in magic first, because if I am mystic study, then I get fewer skills. Oh, interesting. Ooh, 83. That's not bad. Ooh, okay. I am enchanted object. Oh, Ooh, good choice. Well, I mean, good roll. All right. So that doesn't change oh, my It's the one I did education. Want. I got it's like a I got military specialist for my education. Hmm. It's a shame they didn't really work out all that low speed and strength out of you and boot. <laughs> I know, right? Well, that's what my physical skills are going to be for, I guess. Well, that's why he uh is a mutant. They mutated him. Ah, yes, of course. I got uh trade school or on the job training. Wait a second. You don't start with a you can't start with a uh a physical skill program? <gasps> Oh, and one other skill program. There we go. Yeah, that's how you get it done. Okay, cool. I got it. That's got to be physical then. All right. Let's see what my maid or my dude who has a magic item is. 76. Four years of college. Four more years. <laughs> Ooh, nice. That's quite smart. That's true. Oh, wait. Unless you got a literature degree. Yeah. <laughs> you got a literature degree. I don't know what's wrong with you. I have a question. Why I have an answer. is four years of college different from a bachelor's degree? <laughs> well, you see, I went to four years of college, but I didn't get a degree. Yep. I just dropped out after four years. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess I should clarify. Like, I have a bachelor's degree, but I also only went to college for three years. So, yeah. I guess. There you go. So, so why is three I'm years different from a bachelor's degree? <laughs> because you went to three years of college and then dropped out. Um, so John's character kept you. switching majors. Yeah. <laughs> So that's basically, yeah, you can get different years of college. There's bachelor's, master's, and doctorate or PhD. Awesome. Okay. I have jumped to the relevant alien section for education just so I can stay uh, current with everybody. Yeah. Uh, and I have rolled that my character is a rogue or smuggler. Oh, interesting. Uh, it, in terms of the skill uh, system he has. Nice. Okay. So trying to see if there's any... Uh... The military skill program, military specialist is the only education level that automatically selects espionage skills and can select the espionage program a second time to get additional training. Oh, interesting. So I guess I'm good at espionaging. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so am I, apparently. So well, this, we can be spy buddies. True. This is uh, one of the interesting things about the system is all of the skills, uh, all their percentages are based on your IQ. In terms of uh, if you get any additional bonuses based on your stats. Yeah. And it starts at 16. Yeah. But I've got 25. So that's a plus 11% to my skill bonus. So Hot I got plus 3%. Nice. I got nothing. Uh, <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. So That's okay. I'll make it up in it superpowers. So I start with a basic military skill program. Where is that? Oh, military program basic. Okay which includes hand-to-hand -hand basic, running, climbing, military etiquette, radio basic, and WP rifle. That's weapon proficiency rifle. That sounds very boot to me. Yeah. Pretty good. Plus one additional military or es espionage skill program and one espionage skill program. Oh, my goodness. They're plus to different percentages per program that they're telling me to get. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, so what does that mean? What does that percentage mean? Because mine says plus 15. Every single skill has an, a, an individual unique percentage that you have to go find in that skills page on that page of the book. And then you add that percentage to it to start off So with. I add 15% to the percentage that the skill has. Yes, exactly. <sighs> For all of the skills that you select through your uh, training. At this education. point, I kind of want to start making up things about the system to just <laughs> <laughs> just to upset me. Uh huh. Just don't, don't don't forget to run that through the dynamic filter system. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, so two basic. Oh yeah, I'm taking SP Nash program. I get martial arts right away from that. Two skill programs. Okay. Let's see. I need oh, wait, a D four no. plus three rogue skills. I start with espionage. Why would you? Oh, one. I can take an espionage skill program at plus twenty percent. And then I get one SBNR skill program for sure at plus 
Oh my gosh. Oh. Okay. So there are only certain you can only take certain skill programs, certain things. What? Certain skill programs. There's so many research. <laughs> <laughs> Like I was like I was saying, this is probably the best thing ever to do off the air. <laughs> if you can, <laughs> well, we, you can take this if this, but not this. Yeah. Well, that's the this thing. is like taking the freaking LSAT. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the problem: is we need to know what skills our characters have, or at least the programs, in order to figure out kind of uh, like a background for some of the character types. Okay. So. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, I have decided that. I took the journalist investigation program. Nice. And I took it a second time to get more. So I am going to be your classic works for the local newspaper journalist archetype. Nice. I love that. And my alien is incredibly seductive and also a card sharp. Yeah, I got sharp cards. Mm -hmm. I'm like bullseye. <laughs> he throws sharp cards. Yeah. That's awesome. So I'm going to take, there's a, there's a rule in here. Where if you take a program a second time, you get X number of skills, right? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. It'll say under the program, if you take this again, get whatever. It doesn't, though. Then you can't take that program But it again. says you can. Man, I really wish I got programs. Let's make, make this so easy. Okay, wait. I have to take two communication, two weapon proficiencies, two mechanical, and two physical skills. Plus one D4 espionage skills. Oh, my God. I don't get this. Okay, so. The military specialist is the only education level that automatically selects espionage skills and can select espionage program a second time to get additional training. Does that just mean I add percentage to all those skills that are in the espionage program, or is it a matter of... I think it just means additional training is and you can choose more skills from it. Right, but how many? Um additional plus one <laughs> more more skills okay that makes sense one d additional the additional yep that makes sense yeah i have no idea what kind of skill programs to take um i would highly recommend the physical skill program yeah as many times as you can take it um, that's how you get all those physical skills well, out here's the thing oh, is you take that as secondaries remember? um for physical skills you can take any of them as secondary except Acrobatics, gymnastics, boxing, and wrestling. And I believe the physical skills program gives you four physical skills of your choice, which includes, it's basically your only chance to get boxing. To Gotta take that boxing. Okay, so we'll take a physic. Okay. I, would, I would recommend it. You don't have to, uh, but this game heavily skews towards fighty fighty types, and that extra combat skill is very useful. Oh, here it is. If a skill program is selected a second time, the player can make four skill selections of choice from whatever skills are left in the skill category that seems appropriate. Huh. I like it. Yeah, we're going that way. Ooh, I'm going to be like a like a rogi type. No idea what kind of character I want to make here. I'm kind of like accidentally falling into it because I rolled weird. Yeah, I mean, I rolled an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> a slow, dumb idiot. <laughs> Did you get any good stats? What's your good, what's your best stat? Um, I have two 15s for my IQ and my. Well, that's not an idiot. Uh, physical strength. I mean, that's yeah, no, they're just it. like not good at anything. I got yeah. some eights. I got a seven. I got some. I don't have like fifteen is my highest. In Oof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're sweet, but. Dumb. Oh lord. Okay, so I got martial arts. I don't. I don't want to just like. I, pick something that is like picks several other skills of your choice like i don't want that and there are some programs that you can only pick at certain education levels yeah i mean i did look at that so and um i like this one has basic mathematics i'm i'm for that <laughs> well everyone starts with basic math yep your native language that you can speak and read and write yeah and basic math oh, and pilot automobile you start with yeah but uh, pilot automobile and basic math do not come with uh, any sort of thing. I, I do not Just have. Uh, quiet. I do not have pilot op automobile. Do you start with it? Uh, aliens do not. Oh, that's right. I am confused by your Earth car. Do you like have pilot spaceship or something like that? I do. If I roll a spaceship on the magic vehicle table that I also get to roll I on that table. <laughs> this the, aliens are amazing. You get to, you get to make like twelve so extra rolls. Um, one of my favorite characters that I've ever played was an alien from the system, uh, Mishra. 
And she had yeah. she had a uh, form fitting uh, body anti gravity suit. Nice. Yeah. I think last time I played an alien, it had the two floating discs that you put under each feet. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember those. Yeah. My my GM destroyed those instantly because we were in a low tech world uh, <laughs> when I tried playing with that. But they're low tech. They're they're the they're the sky skate thing from uh, from Tailspin. It's yeah, fine. He didn't want flying. Well, like that's okay. Oh, no. What if you like rolled flying for I your know, superpowers? I know, right? <laughs> the gravity is too high. Sorry. <laughs> it was fine. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, so for so, oh God, so for the record, all my skills are written down. There is no way I'm going to bother writing down all those numbers right now, um, unless you want me to. Uh, oh no! But I, I'll just com- don't worry. Just about complete it. them after the game. Yeah, as long as you have the, the show. skills written down, um, that's probably good. Oh, now I have yeah. to choose two espionage skills. What are you doing to me? Okay. So secondary skills. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you go to. I, oh my god. Agreed. Yeah, so secondary skill list, and then it just like lists. Yeah, so there's a list of secondary types, skills. But then you can. Um, and your education program gives you an amount of secondary skills that you choose. And you can. Right, but how do you. You can choose any skill from the secondary skills list for a secondary skill. Um, so if you wanted to pilot something basic, you can pick any pilot basic skill as a secondary skill. You can go all over the place with it. This is secondary skills so are skill. They they still pull from that same skill list. Yeah, from the secondary skill list. Um, so okay. it, on page forty seven, uh, there is mm-hmm. a literal list of secondary skill restrictions, uh, by category. So, like for communications, you can take radio basic or TV video only, and all the other skills are locked out for as secondary skills. But you, so how do you? But you can take any domestic skill as a secondary skill. Oh my so God. you don't have to stick to any categories here. You could be <laughs> like, uh, if you want to know first aid, uh, you can take first aid from the medical skill list. If you want to be a better runner, you could take running from the physical skill list. Um, if you wanted to, these are these are things that your character has basically taught themselves uh, throughout their life, and so that they don't get the bonuses from your skill program. But they do okay. uh, give you the skill. So there's certain ones that you can't take. Right. Is what, is what this is saying? That's exactly right. Yeah. List. The secondary okay. skill list All is right. saying what you cannot take and what you can take effectively. Okay. I really wish that like under it, it was just like not a secondary skill. Like we'll just put an asterisk next to this one if it's not. Well, yeah. Why would they not? Okay. Because you're supposed to look at multiple tables and multiple lists in order to uh, enjoy this game. I'm not enjoying it. <laughs> okay, so I learned that I have to take boxing. Uh, yes, but you can't as a secondary skill. No, I'm not on those yet. Okay, good. It's just trying to understand the concept. Yep. Gosh, how many? Okay, so I get I get to choose six espionage skills in addition to detect ambush, intelligence, and wilderness survival. And Amelia, don't forget the progressive cycling bonus of plus one to each fourth skill. Okay. <laughs> So I'm gonna I'm gonna take pick locks. Goodness, gosh, there's so many different ways I could take this. All right, I think I'll go through and add my physical skill bonuses just so I can have that done. Yep. So there's 13 skills. I get nine of them to start. I guess do I want to be like a kind of an underhanded person a little bit? Well, we've already got Jeff as a scoundrel. Hey, with a heart of gold. Yeah. No, we haven't rolled for that yet. <laughs> <laughs> I have not rolled for what uh, color my heart is. Yep. There is a dis- <laughs> That's true. There's a disposition uh, chart that you get to roll on, which tells you what your character is generally like as a person. Ooh, I should probably take disguise. That sounds good. Are you going to be a master of it, though? Hi, why is hunting different from tracking animals? Because <laughs> tracking is an espionage skill. And hunting is something else, right? Animals. No, I know, but there's hunting and there's track animals. Oh, there's track animals and there's hunting. Because hunting tells you how to hunt and track animals yeah. how, tells you how to hunt track animals, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the difference. Uh, it's like it's like setting traps and stuff yeah. versus just like following an animal around. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, hunting's like a little bit of camo, mm-hmm. a little bit of trap setting. Track I mean, because... animals is like, I'm going to go find this whale. 
mm-hmm. skinning and preparing animals is different. You use track guess, animals so to track like an track animal that you wouldn't like hunt. Bird watching. Yeah, yeah. No, you use it to track animals that you wouldn't otherwise hunt. Like for example, if you've lost a cow out in the wilderness somewhere, you're not going to kill that cow when you find it. It's a valuable cow, unless that was the point of the cow. Yeah, yeah. Right. Unless you were cow hunting. Skin and prepare. Please don't add us, Peta. Now, technically, there is a cow hunting skill, uh, so if you want that. Well, I mean, that only comes in a uh, source book. It's in one of the source books. <laughs> well, I mean, cowboy is a skill that came in one of the source books. So. Yeah, it's, it's true. Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm going to f- modern weapon skill program. Okay, that's great. I don't really care about modern weapons, though. One other skill program. Uh, that's going to be physical. Identify plants and fruits. <laughs> Uh, well, you see, if you're an alien, for example, then some things that are, are fruits may not come from plants. So, But, but not vegetables, you guys. <laughs> no, no, that's the thing. The aliens well, vegetables in this universe. are a plant. Yeah. <laughs> so you identify them that way. Yeah. Not all fruits are plants, though, because of aliens. All right. So, <laughs> But all vegetables are not because of aliens? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. What's, mm-hmm. A, what's a good... Um, swimming's probably good to have as a skill, right? Yeah, sure. Why not? Absolutely. Are there rules for treading water? Yeah, there is, actually. Yeah, there is. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. That's the rule. Because there's a fatigue rate and all that other stuff. Okay. So, cool, I mean, cool. fatigue. I mean, it's still not as bad as that D&D where you can't stop drowning, technically. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, role-playing games are so <laughs> True facts. <laughs> okay, so I, wanna, I want to take a... Uh, I've got acrobatics boxing and gymnastics as three of my four physical skill programs um and i'm thinking swimming's probably a good next one because i get 10 percent bonus on this because it's a primary skill that is a great choice yeah because you will you will actually be able to add that to all those things yeah except for uh, boxing especially with acrobatics and gymnastics where you have those like balance beams and like oh like, yeah back uh-huh. that's why i've got like a plus 23 percent to I don't know, be on a tightrope. I had a character once with an 88% chance to backflip, and he only he only ever went anywhere by backflip. Well, yeah, that's because you get the experience system in this is dumb. An and old you school. Get, you get experience for doing certain things. Mm-hmm. One of them is every time you successfully use a skill, you get like 5 XP. 25. 25. So you would just <laughs> backflip <laughs> everywhere you went. Yeah, and, and the way I did it was I would, anytime I was describing my character doing a skill, I'd take whatever the correct word was out and just replace it with backflip. <laughs> like, he brusquely backflipped through the doors into the, into the bar. <laughs> hut, hut, hut. <laughs> Shooting side-eye at the couple of gentlemen yeah. playing cards in the corner, he backflipped his way to the bar and ordered a sarsaparilla. <laughs> Now, see, that's that's another home rule that my friends and I did is uh, it has to mean something to use the skill, not just. Oh, it meant something. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, I totally get where you're going. It's not that. Skyrim, whereas well, I'm just going to sneak behind you for five hours and have myself an auto run moving into a wall. And now my sneaks at 100. Yeah, it's better than that. Um, although the thing about this game was. We pretty early on realized, my, my DM and I, that leveling in this game, in most Palladium games, is almost completely irrelevant. Uh, you get a D6 hit points, and you get to add those little tiny bonuses to your skills, and who cares? Mm-hmm. So we, it was just a code thing for us. I'd be like, and I backflip menacingly up behind the guy, and he'd be like, 25 XP. It was just the, it was just the language of our game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, if you're going to be backflipping like, strategically, I would give you experience for that strategic backflip <laughs> guys i know the character i'm making <laughs> strategic backflip strategic is like, backflip is here to save name. the day uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> i could do that i could just you know i i enter through the cowboy double doors strategically using backflips so i get uh running climbing military etiquette radio basic and wp rifle from my military program good lord there's so many i have no weapon proficiencies but i do have hand to hand expert I mean, chance. You're what again? A, a mage? Uh, a magic object. You'll be okay because it'll it'll give I'll you. I'll either have superpowers yeah. or wizard powers, mm-hmm. or yeah. both. You'll be fine. I want to be a super wizard. I think the best way to be both is um, whatever MBA is mysti- mystically bestowed abilities. Oh yeah, I think that's the one that gives you you get a major superpower and if you I get know my eight spells. In business then. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think if you're in uh, mystically bestowed abilities, like if you're a Shazam, then you, you one of the roles you can randomly get is you have one major super ability and you know eight spells. Yeah. Okay, question. Um, I start off with WP rifles, but there's no WP rifles. 
its WP bolt action rifle and WP automatic and semi-automatic rifles. That sounds like all the rifles. Yeah, that that's yeah. uh <laughs> that's a product of him having updated this game to second edition without actually reading the whole book again. Uh it, and I would take Find and replace. Uh, automatic and semi-automatic because bolt action went out of favor what 40 years yeah. ago. And it's military training, so I would imagine that makes more sense. Yeah, unless you were like training to be a Civil War reenactor. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe you were. I want to. I don't want to take any. I want to take uh, a WP energy pistol, even though I probably will never see one. Well, maybe with an alien on the, on the team. I've already taken my, my two weapon proficiencies are energy and uh, energy pistol and rifle, because I assume I'll get one or the other. That's always good. I also have WP sword in case I roll that random thing. So I've got uh, WP revolver, WP automatic pistol, and WP energy pistol as my three modern weapon proficiencies I got to select. Did that come from your skill? Yeah, they came from uh, my... Where did they come from? Oh, yeah, they came from my military specialist education level. Gotcha. It gave me one WP modern skill program. And five secondary skills. Um, I already have running, so I don't need that. Oh, my God. Why does each skill take up, like, a whole page? Because there's a lot of things you might need to know about armor or parentheses field. Uh-huh. Oh, athletics general. I forgot about that one. Yeah, definitely get rid of that. That's a good That's one. That's a very good stat booster. Well, I would imagine that he took all of these physical skills because he came in as a weakling with five PS and five PE and six speed. So they probably uh, were like, yeah, we need to uh, we need to train you in a bunch of things in order to make you better. Yeah, you entered the uh, boot camp as a real Gomer pile. And then after a few years of training, I uh, oh, I forget what happens to that character in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the skills, the one of the physical skills that I'm really upset about, um, just because it's annoying, is bodybuilding and weightlifting. It just gives you two PS and 10 SDC and that's it. So good. So annoying. That give me a physical strength of twenty. I know I have to add all of this up in order to figure out what my I, I might I might want to actually take that to give myself. Oh, I could have taken wrestling. I'm going to take so wrestling instead of swimming. How do you very carefully? Okay, with a with certain a, degree of previous skill and knowledge. Uh, how do you what? <laughs> it says plus two PS. It's I would just you add, increase yep, that by two. You increase your physical strength by two points. That's all there is what to it. What I like to do is... So now it's a 17. What I like to do is I like to uh, add all of them up and then just add it all at once. But that's just me. You can do it one at a time. I have time. I have 55 SDC. You know, I haven't even figured out what my SDC is yet. Wow. I have 65. Oh, Ooh. yogi. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take athletics, general, bodybuilding, and weightlifting. Oh, did you? Okay, good to know. So you know what your base is. No. Oh, uh, your base is going to be 20. Is it? Yeah, pretty sure. Because you're just a human. You know, just a human. With powers. <laughs> powers. <laughs> just a human. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll take swimming as a secondary skill. Great choice. Yeah, because it's, it's always good to be able to swim. You don't want to drown. No. And I forgot that I can read and write and speak a language. Okay. So you start off with your native language, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So I might want to know where I'm from. Well, that's lucky because there's a table in there for what part of the world you're from. I'm just going to sneak ahead and roll that quick. Okay, where was that? That was like 25 or something. 25. All right, land of origin. 47. The United States. Oh, imagine that. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so I get basic. Oh, pilot automobile. Basic math. I might as well jump ahead a bit, too, and start rolling out all these alien things, so you guys yeah. have got to wait for me when that's happening. I'm real sad. The enchanted object is not great. It's the worst one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of the four things you could be from magic, enchanted object is kind of the worst. Well, wizard's a little bo- more boring. Like, the one that's well, just wiz- missed a study. lets you get a whole bunch of spells. Yeah. It's interesting, because uh, according to the history, magic wasn't even in the original Heroes Unlimited. Yeah, but then they had all these spell rules that they'd written for a whole bunch of other games, and they were like, hey, hey. It was actually uh, count. It was actually uh, by popular demand from uh, the normal people that buy the books that they put it in. Well, yeah, because they're like, I can't be Doctor Strange or yeah. Thor or Shazam. Uh-huh. How can I be a Zatanna in a situation where there's no Zatanna skills? Mm-hmm. Okay, I've got to roll my alien appearance. I still need two more... Um, Basic secondary skills. Um, I'm trying to write down all these stupid percentages. 89. What would my character Humanoid elephant. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. uh, it says here, I've got a large body, short limbs, a thick wrinkled skin with an AR of seven, a uh, wide head with a long nose, large ears, small eyes, and I may have tusks. A 45% chance they inflict 2d4 damage. Awesome. Well, let's find out, shall we? 41. Yes, I have tusks. Good. Do they inflict damage? Oh, they do. That's automatic if you roll them at all. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. It also gives me some bonuses to strength, uh, physical endurance, STC, and makes me 46 inches taller. Wow. Well, we'll have to find out how tall you are when we randomly roll for that as well. <laughs> Actually, there's a there's a thing in here for the next roll that you'll do will tell you how tall you are if you're an wow. alien. Do mm-hmm. alien height. All right, let's do this thing. I've got some... The hunting skill just gives you bonuses to other skills. Is that it? <laughs> Welcome yes. to Palladium. <laughs> you yes. get a plus 5% bonus to two skills and an additional skill to be named later. I never actually looked okay. at the hunting skill. The skill of killing and preparing an animal for food. Wow. Add the following bonuses to the appropriate skills. Wow. No base skill. That's weird. Yeah, that is crazy. I have never yeah, looked at that skill before. If you've baseline already learned how to track animals, this is like, well, now I also am a little bit better at it because I've practiced killing them as well. Yeah. So I want to take, I think, computer operation and computer programming. Good choices. Because I'm a smarty pants. And I'd like to be able to know how to use a computer. And this was all self-taught because this is my secondary skills. Yeah. You're a self-taught home-built whiz. All right. And maybe you invented a sexy lady in your basement one day <laughs> and went to military boot camp. Apparently, mm-hmm. that part doesn't come up in uh, weird science, but, you know, it's it's implied. Oh, that's very true. Um, OK, so and since I was uh, afforded two different martial arts or, or hand to hand combat styles, um, I can only take one of them. Um, I was I have to take between basic and martial arts. So that's a no brainer. I'm going to take martial arts. And I will figure all of that stuff out later. Thank you for joining us for part one of this character creation series. We'll be back in part two, picking up right where we left off. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts and guests, or even some of our character sheets. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you like the systems discussed and wish to purchase them, links to the products can be found in the show notes. Also, check the notes or the website for cool stuff to go with each character, such as dice or mixtapes. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation, so go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you will find other great shows like A Woman with Hollow Eyes. A Woman with Hollow Eyes is a podcast adaptation of One Shot's live-streamed dramatic Invisible Sun actual play. Discover a world of magic, secrets, and supernatural civic disputes in our unique take on Saturn. In the first season, James D'Amato, Kat Cool, and SNL writer Alan Linick are led on a mind-bending adventure by GM Darcy Ross. Even if you already saw the streams, you want to listen to the podcast for the incredible soundtrack composed and edited by Will Levendahl. 
Get it by searching for A Woman with Hollow Eyes or Darcy Ross on iTunes, Google Play, or your favorite podcast app.